thanks for that. Thanks for having me here. Um, I'm just going to explain quickly in about 10 minutes sort of how I came into doing all of this and then I'll share, you, share with you a couple of recipes and some samples of those recipes that I'll give you. Um, yeah, so I'm Cara from Taranaki New Zealand. Um, this is my sister Jenny, she helps me out. Um, so basically uh, in 2010 I became unwell and I didn't really have an answer for it then. Um, I was uh, having severe bloating, couldn't digest my food, um, night sweats, uh, discoloration of my skin, um, yeah, just a whole lot of abnormal things that I knew something was wrong. Went to the doctor, there's nothing wrong with you, and I didn't accept that as an answer. Um, so at that time in my life, I was um, a PE teacher. I worked in a gym doing Les Mills programs. Also did like uh, figure competing, so I was very much into health and fitness. And I thought that I was leading a healthy lifestyle. Um, stress did contribute to those things, but also my diet did. It was a high animal protein diet, um, and I also focused on um, high protein, low carb, low fat, and low calorie. So I was eating a lot of diet type foods um, that had lots of numbers if you looked on the back of the packet and stuff. So I was eating a lot of artificial food um, and that was having an impact on me. So so back to me being not well, having all these symptoms, no answers, doctor says nothing wrong with you, had a test done, nothing wrong with you. Uh, I was sitting on the couch watching TV and a lady who was uh, in the fitness industry who I actually knew, knew um, she sat down with all the food that she ate, um, which is what I described before what I was eating, and she had found a raw food chef and um, had her come in and, and make her some food and she'd been eating like that for a while. And she found like she had lots of energy, um, She, because she had had those symptoms that I could relate to, being tired, no energy, um, and suddenly she'd turn that around with having this lady make her this food. So I thought, right, that's the answer. I need to look into that. And so I did. Um, and sort of fast forward, I came to Australia, did lots of classes. Um, I did a course for two weeks um, with Karen Bartz. I'm not sure if you've heard of her. And uh, yeah, just got a lot of confidence, started teaching classes, and then led to the store at the market. So that's sort of my uh, journey behind all of this. Um, does anyone have any questions? No? All right, carry on. So what I'll do is I'll quickly go through two recipes, and I chose um, a Bliss Ball recipe and a... Uh, a cracker recipe because uh, I get asked for these types of recipes the most so that's why I chose those these two and I'll just if you can take one and pass it on or just pass it on it's up to you if you would like a copy uh, so the first one that I'm going to make are the apricot balls we also have a sample that will come around for you to try um, so we use the Turkish apricots um, a big thing that I have with um, uh, making this type of food is trying to make it um, as unprocessed or there's not many chemicals or in, that, in the food. Um, so we use the Turkish apricots, which you can see are quite dark, and they're not those bright orange um, ones which have got the preservatives in them. Um, yeah, the sulfates. <laughs> So, uh, I don't know if you've heard of the Chemical Maze, um, it's a, an app that I have on my phone and if you want to go shopping and you see numbers on things, you should really avoid them, but you can put it in that app and it actually tells you how harmful it is and what it does, so that's, that's a good way and I kind of try and eliminate those things as much in my diet. Um, so we use 
the um, Turkish apricots. Um, same with the coconut that has uh, sulfate in them, so it's good to look at the back of the packet. Um, just in here. So, and then we've got um, our orange and um, lemon juice, which was squeezed today. So you don't have to have a thermo mix to do it. I just do a lot of food so that's it's quick and fast. You can use a food processor to blend things. Um, if you don't have a very strong machine, you can soak all your dried fruit and nuts as well to make it easier to blend. Um, does anyone here make crisp balls already? It's quite a popular thing to make, yep. Okay, so we have... This is a nut free recipe as well. This is orange. And I'm small recipe. I'm used to making like massive batches at once. Um, and obviously we've got our little zester, which you might have saw on the um, the movie. Okay, so instead of doing cheese, you're going to use <laughs> your plant base. So I'm just going to zest. Okay, and most of the nutrition in plants is in the skin, the highest concentration. And then we'll just blend that together. Does anyone have any questions about? Anything or combinations or ingredients? Yeah. And you use the zester to um, straighten the skin off things that, like carrots, are very thin skin. Yeah, you could do that. Um, for zesting a carrot, it would be probably more decorative because it would take so long, you know, and it's quite small. I just meant to take the skin off because usually I cut my fingers with the thumb. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you could do, but it would take a while. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to do All right, as I take that out, can I have... Who wants to try Bliss Ball? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Yes, five and apricots from. I order these from a wholesaler, um, Healthy Valley Organics. Um, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't know any other. Like I don't know any um, apricots that aren't organic that don't have the. Yeah. Excuse me. Yes. What was that app that you said? For uh, chemical? The chemical maze. Chemical maze. N A I Z E. Yeah. 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 The um, the orange apricots you would have seen or grown up with, which I did. Yeah. They've been gassed with sodium sulfide and sulfur di uh, sulfur dioxide. Yeah, sulfur dioxide. So these ones that I buy are organic and they're not orange. I take them to schools and kids kids have never seen them before. They've got no idea. They've got no idea what they are. So it's just education. And they, the, the range, who's heard of the 220 range of chemicals? So the 220 to 230, or 229, sorry, that range is the most carcinogenic range of chemicals. And the sodium and the sodium sulfide and the sulfur dioxide, the orange apricots, are both in the 220 range. So if you look at the back of your, your packets, look, look for the 220 range, don't buy those. Yeah. Sorry, where did you um, say you buy apricots? Those organic apricots? apricots. Yeah. Any organic Sailor. shop? Yeah. Even yeah. Coles sometimes. Oh, the wholesale it was uh, Healthy Valley Organics because I have to buy big quantities. Um, sauce, bulk sauce, mm -hmm. or sauce bulk, do have those as well? Yep. Does anyone else know of anywhere you can get them? It's mm -hmm. quite helpful. Yeah, bulk is, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that one makes about 
five small ones. I haven't made a little batch in a long time. Yeah. Okay. You should know how to grow your organic. What are minimum quantities, do you know? I mean, you buy, you buy the bulk of the It's a, a, a amount spent, so... Um, okay. When I registered, it was 250, but I've noticed that if I do a, an order for like 140, I just have to pay $10 delivery. Okay. Yeah, so... Are they per space? Or yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think they're shifted. They're too far for me to go and pick up though. <laughs> I remember that. Do you keep them in the fridge? Uh, you can keep them in the fridge but they last outside the fridge as well. Yeah. Yeah. They last for a very long time. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, does anyone use a dehydrator or have a dehydrator? Yes. Okay, so this could be a recipe that you can do and you may already do it. Does anyone make crackers already? No? Okay. Somebody does, yeah. What was it? Yeah, um, so this, this uh, recipe here, uh, what I've done is most people are curious on how um, they stick together. So I soak the flax seeds in water first and then I leave that and it actually becomes really sticky. Okay, so that's really stuck there. How long would you have to soak them? Um, it doesn't take very long for them to, to um, get this way. I would, I sort of generally soak overnight or a minimum of four to six hours um, for it to be more effective. Um, that just makes them more digestible, more alkaline as well. Um, so that's been soaking since this morning. Right, so if I have a look at my recipe, I should really follow it. Um, so I've got the the soaked flax seeds, and what I'm going to do is just blend up. Um, does anyone juice? Use a cold press juicer. So the pulp of your juice, you could use this in your crackers. Um, you don't have to uh, use the whole carrot. Um, you could. Blend it with a bit of water in your, your smoothie maker and drain the liquid off and put that in as well um, if you don't have a food processor. So I'm just going to put the carrots in here that I've prepared. Um, actually I'll put in the onion and garlic as well. This machine's really strong so I don't need to cut it up too much. So that's the, and the four cloves of garlic that's in the recipe as well. Um, if you don't like those that kind of strength, then you can um, not put in as much. Okay, I'm just going to blend it. Is salt so I'm using WA's uh, lake salt and this is an, a good one to do referencing back to the movie like we're using our local um, product so something that's very popular is Himalayan salt but that's obviously um, imported so this is something local that's still healthy um, that we can use so that's something there so I'm going to use a bit of that and uh, the basil and um, oregano. Some of that in here. Okay, and I've got ground flaxseed as well. So, um, flaxseeds, when you grind them, um, it's important to use them not long after they're ground. Um, just because of the oils in them, they can become rancid. So, um, you know how you buy your flaxseed oil and you put it in the fridge, it's to stop it going ran rancid. So once you gr uh, grind it in something, then it needs to really be stored in the fridge and be used within a couple of days of, of um, doing that or a week or so. 
um, <coughs> otherwise it starts to go off and it's not something that you can really taste um, that it's changing so yeah it's just something to be aware of <coughs> so if you're buying this kind of stuff and you know how it sits on the shelf it's not really actually the best stuff to, to get so we're going to put that in here so have, have I soaked before you grind them? Uh, no, ground no. has to be dry. Okay. Yeah, otherwise it won't. It's too sticky. Yeah. And then I'm just going to mix the carrot. What I might do, do you want to start handing out the crackers? Sure. What are these packs that you've got? Pardon, sorry? Uh -huh. You say it's yeah. mm -hmm. It goes round, so you can't tell what is the problem with it. Uh, the oils that are unstable and they start going rancid. Yeah, so then that's not good for the body. <coughs> yeah, and it's not really something, it's quite a bitter thing to eat, so it's not something you can really taste for. Um, do you know what I mean by rancid? Or you know how coconut oil gets that funny taste after a while? It's, or coconut if it's been processed too much? No, yeah. It has a funny taste to it, but this one's not as distinctive. Can you use flaxseed meal? You know the meal that you can buy as well. Is that the same yes, as ground? Yes, that's yeah, that's the same thing. Yeah, as ground. Yes, yeah. Because I just buy mine from like Coles or Woolies or something. Yeah, yeah, like that. that's yeah, that's exactly it. So should I have that in the fridge? Yeah, mm. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, someone had their hand up. It's not gonna. Does anyone else have any questions? Yeah. Is the same as Yes, it is. Mm. Yeah, and you can get golden or brown. Um, they're very, they absorb water really quickly, so you've got to work quite quickly with the mixture. Um, and obviously adding in water, so it makes it more easier to uh, mix in and it might seem like you've got a little too much water in there but the, they're so absorbent they they really um, absorb it quite quickly okay how much water did you add uh i just kind of poured it in there but it, it's got it there that it's um Oh, yeah, there's some. It should be, have a step in there for the crackers. No, no, no. Yeah. Oh. Add water if it looks too thick to spread. Um, does it not say? Four cups. Oh, four cups of water. Or is that to soak it? Oh, that's to soak it. Yeah, I just add it um, so it's still easy to spread. You'll, you'll actually know that if it doesn't have enough water in it. Okay, so this is a dehydrator sheet that, that goes in your dehydrator. And you buy these sheets to go over the top. Um, the brand that I have is Excalibur, which is one of the most popular ones. Um, so I've added water in there to make it um, smooth on the sheet. So I'm using an offset uh, spatula, which is kind of like something that you use to ice a cake. You can get it at the um, supermarket or the kitchen warehouse. And by having that distance, it's actually easier to spread than using like a, like a spatula. Okay. So uh, there's a lot of recipes that say use a spatula, but this is the fastest and easiest. See how I'm spreading that there, and that's how you want it to be. If it's like concrete or not moving so well, that's when you add the more more water. So. Carol, if you want to hold it up so people can see. Okay. And you're just spreading it out. Obviously, the thicker it is, the longer it takes to dry. And it takes about 24 hours to dry and you have to flip it. Um, 
if I left like left it like that, it would uh, go rancid because I haven't flipped it over and it's sort of the moisture's holding in uh, uh, against the sheet and it, it goes off and that, that you can taste. Um, and so you've got to flip it. Okay, so that's and to make your crackers, you score them before you make them. So you do this and help whatever size you want. You might want a big one. And then that goes in there. And we work between 41 and 48 degrees. And that's just to preserve the nutrients in the food. So we're not cooking them off. And it makes it more digestible as well. So that, and that's why it takes so long. How do you oh, flip it on there, sorry? How do you flip it? Uh, you put it on another tray? Or yeah, you can use it. Another tray okay. and Spend just yeah, uh, thing it over, or I actually have like a quite a big, um, and I just flip it. Yeah, but yeah, there's two ways you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. So do you do that in a dehydrator? Yes, I do. Yeah. Oh, they <laughs> oh that's good. Um, I when I before I uh, when I first started, I didn't have a dehydrator um, I did try in the oven and I had it slightly ajar and on 50 um, it's quite an uneven drying so it wasn't very effective uh, but that's how I, I started but you can actually cook these like if you wanted to um, I don't know how long it would take definitely wouldn't take 24 hours so don't leave it in there um, but you can can cook them I've seen uh, Pete Pete Evans, um, he's done something similar, and he actually cooked his in, it, in the oven, so yeah, you can cook it if you wanted to give it a go and you didn't have a dehydrator. Yes? What was the name of the uh, local salt that you said? Oh, it's just WA Lake Salt, That's Lake that was salt. the only thing on the label, because I buy everything in bulk now, yeah. I don't really know, like, um, yeah. And the, do you know if it's iodized? iodized. Whatever it's oh, no. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Have you tried the version of this recipe without the um, ground flax seeds and less water, or how will it turn out? Uh, yeah, it would just be more seedy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just more seedy, yeah. I've, I have done it without grinding, yeah. yeah. Um, it's very nice with sunflower seeds and stuff as well. I tried to make it as basic as possible. Um, there's lots of different things you could do to add or take away from that recipe. Um, or make it look prettier. It's, it's not a real pretty looking cracker. <laughs> so it could have some sesame seeds and stuff in there to make it look nicer. Yeah, but it's just something very basic. Is it, um, you know the flax seeds, mm. um, I was reading that they're not very digestible and mm. you, you know you're soaking them, Yeah. does that make it more, I mean I know I'm soaking nuts to make it it's more digestible but does it yeah. fully take the, everything in when you've soaked uh, soak the flax seeds? It, it does make it more digestible but it does come down to the individual. There are some people that find flax seeds are too heavy or just their system don't, doesn't cope with them. Mm. Or it makes them go to the toilet, or you know, like everyone's different. Yeah. So um, I guess you just sort of have to work it out. <laughs> I think the flaxseed um, meal is easier. Yes. Yeah, I, I use that, but um, I never use the whole flaxseed. Yeah. yeah. You could actually like use more ground and omit. That would be alright. Or. or yeah, cut down the, the amount of soaked, or you could um, different seeds in it. Yeah, different seeds in it. It's the the soaked flax seeds is the binding mm, kind yeah, of yeah. what makes it stick together really well. Okay. Yeah, but you could definitely minimise it. And other stuff. Mm. Um. I just want your opinion. I've yep. a circular um, dehydrator. Would you cut oh, yes. yours, the circle in half to flip it, or would you keep it whole and flip it, like when you're dehydrating it? Uh, I've used a circle one, 
Uh, you score them out. So all around. Yeah, you, yes. you, you score them out. I just them turn out. them individually. And then, yeah, I oh, okay. them. Yeah. Or you could have a, another thing over the top and yes, flip it. Yeah. Do, they, do, they, do they crumble easy when they're dehydrated? Because they think quite firm when they're, when they're dry. Uh, so it depends they're, how dry they are when you flip them. If they're still quite soft, they will fall apart. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to, it has to be quite dry. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, how many hours would you say for do that drink? About 24. So after 12, flip it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It depends. With the um, round ones, they, they do run slightly quite, quite warm. Yeah. So it might be less than a round one, mm -hmm. the square ones. Yeah. It's just something you probably have to experiment with and check. Yeah. Yeah. Does anyone else have any more questions? Did you enjoy the crackers? Yeah. yeah. Is, it some, is it a recipe that you could repeat? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right, well, I just wanted to keep it short and sweet, um, and yeah, thank you for your time. Um, and yeah. uh, we're in the sort of fruit veg section, yeah. Um, the yes. yes yeah. We're just yeah. across from the tea. Yeah. 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 Uh, the Fremantle market. <laughs>